Hey there, so it's almost school time again, and that means it's September, so, you know, it's coming out September, so Halloween is just around the corner. Well, for me, I'm actually getting ready for the Halloween season right now. Uh, like many people on here or at home, they actually celebrate uh, the whole Halloween month, and they do like the uh, like the 31 Days of Horror, or they try to do the last seven, at least, and, uh, you know, watch horror movie every day, watch one or two. And I, I enjoy doing that. By the way, welcome back. It's been a while since I've done a video. So uh, let's shake off the cobwebs here and actually get into this. Now, I've got a lot of stuff to show you guys. But first off, I want to let you guys know that f as far as Halloween watching comes, there was a few choices to go between. I uh, There's the Arrow set coming out in October, the George Romero one. And uh, I looked at that, and that's one that I want to grab. But I'm not sure if I'm going to grab it right away. Uh, there's a hammer set coming up from Indicator, and that's one I wanted, but uh, I had to choose between it and something else. And if you've been watching me for a while, then you know that when this year started, uh, this was 2017 WTF year, <clears throat> and I started off with a huge uh, amount from a certain company by the name of Vinegar Syndrome, a favorite company of mine now. Just to let you guys know, November 24th is coming to close, and that's when Vinegar Center does their Black Friday sale. Uh, for me, it's like the best, it's the best sale of the year. My hair's a mess. Um, <laughs> and Vinegar Syndrome actually changed the way that I was going to do my Halloween. I knew that I didn't want to go in and do the same old stuff over and over again. I've watched Halloween, and I will continue to watch Halloween films umpteen times. Uh, the Friday 13th, the same, Nightmare on Elm Street. The same. I wanted Halloween as coming this year to be a little bit different. So I wanted to do some different stuff. And some of my uh, fantastic uh, friends and viewers and people that follow me on Instagram as well, uh, they, uh, they know the type of stuff that I'm into and they know the type of stuff that I'm going for. So Vinegar Syndrome made an announcement. And uh, it's about a weekend now, but I'll, uh, what I'll do is I'll bring it up here. So, if you've watched the scene on my Instagram, you know which one this one is. Uh, so we got a actual five pack of like not 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 the adult stuff, but actual actual horror. So it has Demon Wind, uh, Ted V. Michael's Corpse Grinders, uh, Blood Beat, and we got three by Roberta Finley. We have uh, Prime Evil, Lurkers, and a Woman's Torment. Now, a lot of people around my age especially, are going to remember Demon Wind because Demon Wind had one of those cool lenticular covers. Now, if you got the Jack Frost one, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, so, let me bring it up here and show you uh, the cover that they're doing for Demon Wind. That is freaking awesome, and it looks just like the cover from the VHS. Uh, so, I'm really looking forward to that. There's three, I think, let me see now. There's at least three limited editions. No, actually, four of the limited editions in the package. Now, the package for October does run $99, but that's not too bad, actually, uh, for, like, five Blu-rays and that are actually six movies. It has, uh, again, three of Finley's. It's got the limited edition lenticular uh, for Demon Wind. Just some amazing, amazing stuff. I'm really looking forward to it. I ordered it the day that, it, that they announced that there's a period up for it. They don't, they don't take the money until you actually, until they actually get ready to ship the order out. And that's usually about a week before uh, they, they're going to be getting the actual release. So around October 24th, maybe the week before October 24th, you're going to see uh, the money come out for the uh, Vinegar Syndrome package. They'll <clears throat> actually send you an email uh, because the way they're doing pre-orders now is that they set up with a new company. Uh, so they'll send you an email out and, and le let you know what you need to do to finalize that order. Now, I have heard that, uh, and if you follow Vinegar Syndrome, you probably have as well, that Liquid Sky is actually coming out as one of the big things for November 24th uh, uh, Black Friday sale. But there's two other special editions. So if Liquid Sky is not your bag, there's two other ones. And it's hinted that they may be horror-related. So that's really, really good. They put in some great horror in the past. Undertaker was a fan, was fantastically fun. Uh, Psycho Cop Returns was great, and I would love to see them put it with Psycho Cop. Psycho Cop Returns, Returns is just funny and creepy and all that kind of cool stuff. Uh, so I'm really excited about Halloween this year. If I can wing it, uh, there's a couple others in the Vinegar Syndrome earlier this, uh, in the last couple months that I would love to get. Uh, they're putting out, they put out for September, uh, Cycles in Love, 
Orgy of the da Dead, that's Ed Wood, by the way, and uh, Trip with the Teacher, which actually does look like it's just like a sex exploitation thing, but it's kind of a revenge type of, type of film, uh, kind of survival, like to call those type of things. And uh, I find they're fun films. Uh, some of these films, like Trip the Teacher, you, you're probably seeing, like if you're a collector of the, uh, of the drive-in like, features or the, that, that BCI used to put out, because I'm sure they put it out in one of those. I think Mill Creek may have duplicated that when they redid the, some of those sets. So uh, you might be able to, if you're not really sure what you're getting into, you might want to check out a cheap version of it first before you actually go in and buy the big uh, special deluxe edition. That's one way to do that. That's a, a cheap way to do that. And that's for a few of the movies, like... Uh, if you had the After Dark Thriller set, for instance, you probably have seen Double Exposure or, uh, or a few of the others that were uh, that, that came out. And uh, Double Exposure, I don't have yet, but my dad has it. It's a Michael Callan film. It's really good, and I do really, really recommend it. I like it a lot. And uh, we watched it when I was to my dad's. Actually, I, like, let's you guys know, I just got back off vacation. I went down to see my kids. I was there for eight days, and uh, I, got, I got to see my kids. I got to see my dad. I uh, went to see my cousin Raj. And we did some uh, we did some retro game hunting. I'll talk to you about that in a second. Uh, but first, I'll show you some stuff that I got. I was at the flea market uh, this week, and they had a great some great tables there. Again, some great people. Um, I want to check Atomic Records for something this week as well. Uh, if I get that, you guys will be the first to know. Uh, and uh, my videos are fewer are more few and far between now. But hopefully, hopefully we can make sure that when my videos come out. Uh, you guys are still watching, and you find these uh, fun and entertaining. I want to just keep that going and keep that uh, keep keep the fun for both of us. So let's get into some stuff I got right now. And uh, first one, I got to give a shout out to Leroy Green because uh, he's the guy that I would I will go to when it comes to like uh, martial arts stuff. He knows his martial arts. So if you know who Leroy Green is, or if you've ever seen any of his videos or you've seen him say stuff on Instagram, he knows his martial arts. So as soon as I got this one here, I. Uh, I tagged Leroy in my Instagram, and I was like, you know, dude, uh, I picked this up, and he knew right away what it was, um, and I was so excited, because it's one that I actually did know and I did want, and it's a Rariscope, and if you know Rariscope, they were, comp they were like a subsidiary of like BCI, so there's some cool like kung fu martial artsy stuff that they put out, and this here is Showdown at, at, a, at the Cotton Mill, so... So there's Chang Chi, and he was with, uh, I think, the Shaw Brothers. You know, anything that I get wrong, if you're watching this, be feel, feel free to, like, to let me know down below. But he was with the Shaw Brothers, and I think this is his first picture, like, away from the Shaw Brothers, the first one that he did on his own. And uh, can, he can, does consider this his, uh, I think, his favorite picture, one of his best pictures. So you can't get these anymore. Uh, BCI is, like, defunct, so whenever you see these... Uh, Pick them up if you're a martial arts fan, and if you can get them really cheap, and uh, and you're not a martial arts fan, and you want to send them my way, I'm collecting rare scopes, so feel free to do so. Uh, any donations to the Pin Media Library would be greatly uh, appreciated. Now, right here, as you can see, I'm in my sitting room. Uh, my media library is downstairs. I was going to do the do it down there, but the cats are kind of like moving around, stuff like that. And they're doing their thing down there. So I decided to get, leave that to them today. If you can look, see in the background, you're going to see I got some 80, 80, eight, actually 8 millimeter films to show you guys today too. I got a few of those. And we actually watched uh, one of them on the, just on the wall there just to make sure that it worked okay. It worked fantastic. Um, we found that the reel uh, on the on Bell & Howell was a higher quality reel than the one on the Holiday 1000. So we took the Bell & actually because the Bell & and how we're still waiting to get the uh, the light for that one. So, but the holiday's got a fantastic light. So we took the Bell and Howell reel out and uh, used it on the holiday. Worked like smooth like butter, and uh, it was fantastic. So here you go, guys. It's shooting at the Cotton Mill, and it is. Uh, so you got some features on it, which I'll. If you want to like pause your video and see what those are. I love like uh, martial arts films, and I love these type of martial arts films. We've got like Shaolin or something like that, and I usually like. I like the cheesy uh, earlier ones. Now I picked this one up. It's one that I I loved the uh, first time I saw it on VHS. I've never seen this since I saw it on VHS, but there's something about this movie that I really really liked, and it's been a long time since I've seen it, so it'd be going in pretty uh, 
pretty new again with new eyes. I like that. Uh, I do remember certain things, though. There's certain things that really stand out. Uh, it's just, uh, it's a thriller. And it's, there's Christopher Lambert from, uh, of course, Highlander fame. But it's uh, Night Moves. Yeah, Tom Scare, Dan Lane's in this one as well, I think. Uh, yeah, and Daniel Baldwin. So, good cast and a uh, really, really good movie. If you haven't seen it, I do recommend at least checking it out. I, uh, I find, that, uh, find that one really good. Now, a while back, I picked up the Dalek uh, double disc set that came out from uh, Doctor Who. So, I went to that table t uh, this week at the, uh, the flea market. And lo and behold, he had the other one I was looking for, the Cyberman Doctor Who set. So this is a this is really cool. It has a few different uh, ones on there. I'll let you know. So on the 10th Doctor, it's got Army of Ghosts and Doomsday. 11th Doctor, you get Closing Time and Nightmare and Silver. And the 12th Doctor, you get Dark Water, Death and Heaven. And the and as the bonus feature, uh, one of the bonus features is Earthshock, which is an amazing 5th Doctor episode uh, with a shocking ending. Uh, really shocked me at the time that I saw it. Even though it's been years since that's come out, I still won't spoil the ending for you. I have not seen the Cyberman episode of Shock because it is incredible. And that is a great new feature it called Cyberman Origins on here that I really want to check out. Uh, although I do have the, uh, of course, the 10th and 11th Doctor episodes, I think. Uh, I don't have the 12th Doctor episode because I don't have the 12th Doctor uh, set yet. And uh, I definitely, I think I might have Earthshock and something, but I don't have uh, Cyberman Origins. And I really, really want this, so a really good one. Next up, I picked up a uh, classic, and uh, they gave two versions of it on there. It's part of the uh, Universal 100th Anniversary uh, sets, and that's uh, I grabbed Imitation of Life, the one with Claudette Colbert and, of course, Lana Turner. Uh, two really fantastic films. I really like these movies. Both get their own uh, commentary on them. It's a two-disc set, and I love the way they open up like this. As you can actually see. So the... Um, Films were shot actually in 1934 and 1959, so there's quite a space between both uh, versions of the film. But uh, if you've never seen The Imitation Life, it's a really good film. Uh, it's one that I watched when I was really young on, uh, I think it was on CBC Late Night. And uh, I think I've seen, over the years, I've seen both versions, but I'm, I'm not quite sure. So it's going to be interesting to check these out and see if one stood out. Like, it's been a while since I've seen this, since I was probably about, like, uh, probably 10. 10 or 11, uh, back when I used to watch CBC Late Night all the time. Uh, CBC is a channel here in Canada, and CBC Late Night basically was every night they used to show a different, like, uh, kind of a classic film. And ju during the, uh, the Halloween season, for instance, you'd get, like, uh, Universal Horror every night. So uh, that's how I grew up on, like, Universal Horror. That's why I saw a lot of stuff like Joan Crawford and, and, and uh, in, uh, in Humoresque, John Garfield. Uh, Yes, incredible. And this is kind of a actually fortuitous. I the recent like it's the anniversary of the movie The Outsiders, uh, actually a few days back, and uh, I didn't know that actually when I picked this up. But I found The Outsiders, the complete novel. Now this isn't the uh, The Outsiders theatrical feature that uh, that's out there as well. I think I've got that as well. But this is the complete novel version. So what they did was the they, they added some scenes, and they took some certain scenes out. Uh, they made the, the movie more into the timeline of the novel. There's some great features on here as well. Uh, I think the second disc is like uh, is basically like the uh, kind of a, a making of or something like that. But it is a fantastic, fantastic movie. If you've seen The Outsiders, you know, and you haven't seen the complete novel edition, I do recommend checking it out. Uh, I found this one for a dollar at the flea market. I couldn't believe it. It was fantastic. And I've been looking for that one for years, never come across it, and just, uh, I got three or four other ones picked up, but that one had to be one that I grabbed. Now, for 50 cents, I grabbed this one, and it goes under another title, but I can't remember the other title right now, but it is Naked Eye. So I got to change the case on this, because, you know, it's got one of the rental cases, but the disc is in mint condition. Uh, probably because not a lot of people watch this movie. Uh, it is one of those kind of like uh, cheesy, like, softcore sex exploitation type thrillers uh if you're not getting if you don't have vinegar syndrome uh then you, these things are really really under uh under shown underutilized you don't see a lot of this stuff nowadays uh so uh like you know basically uh, vinegar syndrome puts stuff out kind of like this but uh whenever i come across something like this uh vvs put it out and uh it's not an easy find so i'll grab it right away I just love these type of thrillers. They're kind of fun. And you see actors in them that probably only did like three or four movies. Some of them are good. Some of them aren't. Uh, but uh, 
I do remember seeing Renee Ria in a couple things, and I, I do remember liking her. So I know that the director that did this and did some other stuff too, did like, you know, some play-by movies and stuff like that during the, you know, when the play-by had the, well, they still do, they got the channel, and they used to do like the play-by thrillers and that. Uh, that's not one of those, but it probably could be. I don't, it's been a while since I've seen this one, but I know I have seen this one actually. Adding on to my MGM collection as well, I grabbed the Lou Diamond Phillips in the first power. Now, there is a great Blu-ray release of this one. I'm pretty sure 88 Films actually put out a good release of this. Uh, I don't have that yet, but I did want to have the... Even if I did have it, I would have picked this one up. Anyway, it was a dollar, and I want to add it to my MGM collection. I am collecting the uh, the MGM releases, MGM and the Minute Movie releases, especially the genre stuff. So anytime I come across stuff like that, it's, a, it's an instant buy for me, especially like, you know, at a buck. It's just fantastic. Great condition. And I really do like the first power. So interesting checking that out again. It's been a while since I've seen it. Another minute movie uh, MGM release. There you go. Is this one right here. And I have uh, one of these I think on their own on the MGM. But I uh, didn't have the other one. I think I had the people at the time forgot. Now uh, Kino has put out uh, at least two of these for sure. And I'll grab those down the road because I love the Kino Blu-rays. I'm a huge fan of Kino. Uh, i got some Kino stuff coming right now, actually. So there's People at the Time Forgot, The Land at the Time Forgot, Last Man on Earth, and Panic in Year Zero. So that's some really cool uh, sci-fi there. I really like this stuff. I don't think there's any features on any of these. It doesn't say so here. If there is on the disc, that would be a pleasant surprise. But a lot of these minute movies are just, you know, the movie and maybe the trailer on there as well. Now, the next thing I picked up was a complete series. And uh, it actually was supposed to only last one season. But the fans of the series sent in hot sauce, I think, uh, to uh, as a uh, protest to keep the show on the air. If you know what that is, then you probably remember the show as well as me. And uh, that was Roswell. So I got the uh, big box edition of Roswell. All these were in mint, by the way, which was amazing because I usually the big box ones you see them the disc are scratched and stuff, but. My better half, she goes through all the discs <laughs> before we buy the stuff. Uh, and Roswell Season 2. And, of course, Roswell, the final chapter. It's third season. It lasted three seasons. I think the first seasons were like 22 or so episodes each. And the last season ran at, uh, at 18. So, uh, there you go for those. Now, the next thing I found was a table that had a lot of Western stuff on there. So, I got a few of those to show you. I don't normally have much westerns and that's a shame because I really love westerns especially when I was a kid. <coughs> now one I'm going to leave here for last, a couple I'm going to leave for last because I just really enjoyed it. Now the first thing, this wasn't was on the table with the westerns. I found this was the very first thing I found when I was, when I was going in. It was there for a dollar and I really love this, uh, this miniseries. I got to get the movie, there's the TV series as well and there's a kind of like the spinoff TV series at Light Years which I also got to grab so you probably know what that is by now and it is a Lonesome Dove. Uh, Lonesome Dove is a really great kind of modern western. It's well casted. Rob Duvall, Tom Lee Jones, uh, Danny Glover, Diane Lane. Hey, Diane Lane again. Robert Urich, Frederick Forrest, D.B. Sweeney, Ricky Schroeder, Angelica Houston. Just an amazing cast. Got some great features on here as well. And uh, I'm so looking forward to actually checking this out again. It's been a while since I've dived into the Lonesome Dove world, and I'm really looking forward to it. I love this here, uh, this here show. So I also grabbed up and uh, at a really good price, the Gary Cooper, uh, the MGM Movie Legends Collection. So there's four in this one. I'll just take them out really quick. There's no features. It's uh, just the four films. I didn't have either one of them, actually, So, uh, which is really amazing, considering like uh, what some of them are. So Vera Cruz is a great movie with the Gary Cooper, Burt Lancaster. It's got a great cast, actually. Uh, you know, Cesar Mero's in this one. George McCready's in here. Ernest Borgnine. Incredible film, an, an amazing western you haven't seen. I really do recommend Veracruz. Uh, we also got um, okay, the uh, the real glory in here. I'll be I'll be lying if I tell you I don't remember what this one's about right now because I honestly really don't. I think David Niven's in it, uh, but uh, apparently Roger Crawford is as well. But uh, it's pretty much all I remember for it. It's been a long time since I've seen that one. Uh, the winning of Barbara Worth is here as well. Another one of the uh, the westerny ones. And the cowboy and the lady. And who plays the lady here? Let us see. Uh, well, Merle Oberon. So we got a uh, Oberon, Walt, Patsy Kelly, Walter Brennan, Fuzzy Knight, Mabel Todd. Mabel Todd's in a few of these things. And Harry Davenport. So, <clears throat> again, this is the uh, Gary Cooper collection. Love that back picture of Gary Cooper right there. It's a very young Gary Cooper. 
and uh, incredible stuff. So next up, I can't believe I found this. Like you, some can find, sometimes find the complete series, uh, which costs a few bucks, but you can never find the single seasons. Well, I don't ever anyway. Uh, this is, I think, this is a Thomas release. Actually, no, it's Flying Pictures. Because it's one's been Thomas. It's got a Thomas like look to it. Uh, if you know the Thomas like uh, pictures, but this one is the Gene Autry Show season one. It's really cool, actually. Gene Autry Show ran for four seasons. Now, uh, the first three seasons of the Gene Autry Show were done in black and white, as it was was done back then, and the fourth season was done in color. Now, the really cool thing is that the last two episodes of season one. Uh, the X experimented and the made the last two episodes in color. So there's two color episodes on this one here. And you wouldn't see color on the Gene Autry show again until season four. Uh, Gene Autry is one of those guys that was like the singing cowboy. He was, wasn't so much of the, uh, you know, the, the, the really great writer or really great fist to cuffs type of guy. He uh, did the stories that he did pretty well. Uh, it's These are pretty much like, uh, it's almost like anthology based. It's not like a uh, a series where like the, it runs from like one to another. Uh, because he had his, uh, what was the name of his sidekick? I think it's Pat, Pat Butram, uh, was his sidekick. And uh, in some episodes, they know, they know each other. Other episodes, they don't know each other. Uh, so um, it's kind of it's kind of cool that way. Uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, going into this. And, uh, yeah, Gene Autry actually got his start. Oh, he was one of the, he was one of the big singing cowboys. Of course, Roy Rogers, um, you know, the most famous singing cowboy, got his start as, as a heavy. In, uh, in Gene Autry pictures. We knew Gene, Gene Autry was, ha- was kind of on the outs with the studio. They were looking for somebody else. Um, Roy Rogers was going in to get his hat fixed at the time. And a guy came in uh, and wanted to make sure that he had his cowboy hat for the next day because he was going to going out because the company was looking for a new singing cowboy. Um, Gene Autry said, uh, you know, basically, uh, Roy Rogers said, well, you know, when's that going on? <clears throat> and... Uh, he said, well, this is the da- time. Uh, Roy Rogers was picked, and both guys became huge stars, and they parlayed their uh, big screen uh, personas onto a television successfully. And, you know, love this stuff. Now, the one I really like that I really got to pick up and find is Hop Long Cast. I'm a huge fan of Hoppy. Uh, you know, William Boyd's character. Uh, I don't have that here today to show you guys. I'm, uh, I did see some there. So I'm hoping it'll still be there because I really like Hotman Casty and his stuff. And uh, my cats are going a little bit crazy over there. So I'm assuming probably a spider got inside and they are taking care of it. So I'll leave them to that. Next up is a time of life release. <clears throat> and uh, there were two versions of this set. There was a, I think it was a time set. And there's a time life set. So I grabbed the time life set. Uh, the time life set was pretty inexpensive. I might grab that one as well because it had an extra film on there. Uh, so this is the Legend of the Gambler. So there's the three Gambler films on there. I'll open this up to show you guys. I'll show you why I grabbed this one first. I didn't have a lot of money this week, so I had to choose. Um, so this one here actually has a, a set of still sealed. Gambler playing cards. Of course, Kenny Rogers played the Gambler. Bruce Boxleitner is in it as well. I think Reba McIntyre is in one of these movies. One of these at least. So, it opens up and you see there's... Ah, we got the Gambler. The Gambler, the adventure continues. And Gambler, the legend continues. Legend continues? Yeah, they, they just keep continuing it. Um, I remember when I was a kid, I used to love the song. And along with Coward of the County. Um, now, that's the thing. The other set had uh, the movie for Coward of the County on there. And I f- remember the Gambler movies. I don't remember the Carter of the County movie. I think that might have been the one where he was a preacher or something like that. But it's been a long time. So I might have to pick that one up. Uh, because I don't have Carter of the County on me. And uh, it is just a really, really... I really I really like these uh, TV Western movies. I found they were done really well. And, uh, oh man, Linda Evans is one of these too. Linda Gray is another one of these. I thought for sure Reba McTower is one. I could be wrong. Uh, but I know for sure that uh, he just had some great actors. Linda Gray, I love from uh, Dallas, of course. And I just couldn't believe I got it, found a time life set there and for a very good price. Next up is a uh, a really nice History Channel set. Again, we're, on, we're sticking on the Western theme. I got a few Western stuff here. So we got the Real West, Cowboys and Outlaws. Uh, 
love this here. So there are eight documentaries on four discs. So I'm just going to put this here like this. I'll show you the inside in a minute. So we got uh, Buffalo Bill, Wild Bill Hickok, the Rear West Legendary Cowboys, the Law from Behind the Tin Star, the James Gang, the Texas Rangers, Outlaws, the Ten Most Wanted, the Guns That Tame the West. So it opens up like a, it's like a box, it opens up like this. You look in the inside here, and you uh, just can see the discs like this, and they kind of like that. Descriptions are on the inside. Uh, History Channel puts together a really good package. Uh, the way this is done kind of reminds me of the way like HBO used to do a lot of their stuff, like their odds and series and stuff like that. Uh, really well done. I really like the way this is done. And uh, was excited to get it. The next one I got, I've been looking for for a long time. And that one there I can best describe it. And I think most people would describe this series as, you know, uh, Western meets Twilight Zone. So if you know what this show is, you know immediately what I'm uh, what I'm talking about. It's it's uh, probably the newest out of all the Western stuff I'm going to show you right now. Uh, it had a great great cast. So of course, it was an anthology series, so yeah, it was with different people from John Ritter to uh, uh, John Glover. Uh, There's a lot of big actors on this one here. I'll look it up seriously. It ran for two seasons. It actually. Uh, has a great ending in the second season. I, I really liked it. So uh, I've got the first season here right now. I've been looking for it for ages. If anybody's got the second season, and as always, send it my way. <laughs> I'll gladly take it if you're not a fan of the show. And it is Dead Man's Gun. I really do like Dead Man's Gun. I love the way this is done against another box set like this. And uh, I'll just take it out of the box. So it's just a regular box. And there's a, uh, two, there's volume one, which is a uh, three to set. And volume two, which is uh, the other two discs, and I think these were sold separately as well, uh, but they look much nicer in a snazzy box, so I like that. I think there's a slimline case. It's actually not that expensive to buy. I think in the other, like the slimmer cases that they got out there, but uh, I had to have this. Uh, now the uh, last two I got are some classic ones, so I was very excited to finally get these, and it's a shame that I didn't have these in my uh, collection. Now, the first one I do is the three pack set, but the other two I didn't, and. Uh, I'm glad to finally have them. So there's High Plains Drifter, Dressery Rides Again, and Winchester 73. I really love Winchester 73. Actually, I love all these movies. I'm a big fan. Jimmy Stewart was a great, great Western actor. Shenandoah was a fantastic film. Um, High Plains Drifter, not what I consider the best of uh, Clint Eastwood stuff, but it is a really good movie. Uh, Dressery Rides Again I love as well. Uh, there's a little bit of humor, humor to that one. Uh, Winchester 73 actually has a commentary. What's the commentary is take that in the light sense of words because Jimmy Stewart basically talks about his entire career. And it's not on one disc. It's all done on their own separate discs as well. Don't mind showing the, if there's a code thing there because it's not going to work. <laughs> it's, been, it's a few years ago. Uh, so then, as you can see, the Destry Rods again, the Winchester 73 one, uh, have kind of like a uniform look to them. That's because there's actually a Jimmy Stewart Western set out there with, I think, six altogether. But uh, I got more stuff to show you. But other stuff that I picked up out of, out of this lot, uh, this was the the, the crown uh, jewel of uh, ones that I I've been looking. I didn't even know this existed, and I picked it up and I got extremely excited. I wanted to come home and watch it right away, but uh, I think Defenders was on. I'll give you my thought on Defenders afterwards, by the way, and uh, and another series that I watched that I binge watched. Um, but as soon as Defenders was over, as soon as we got through Defenders, I put this on immediately, and we sat down, we watched it, we had a blast, we loved it, and I've watched it again since then. I've watched it now twice, and I'm going to watch it a lot more. I love documentaries, I love documentaries on cinema, and this uh, was narrated by Eli Wallach, and just, it's incredible. It's, uh, when Cowboys Were King, it's a great History Channel documentary, it runs 100 minutes long, I wish it was longer. And it uh, talks about the cowboy film right from back in the silent films, talking about guys, uh, you know, but we got like Buck Jones, Jan McBrown, Durango Kid, you know, Charles Starrett, uh, getting into guys like Gene Autry, Roy Rogers, uh, John Wayne, uh, so many. Like, of course, they could only get like in 100 minutes, they can uh, just, you know, the, this, the, you learn some great stuff, but it's, you just want to know more. And I uh, remember I had this like book that, uh, the, that I got from the library, like I read it over and over again. It was like a book on Western films, and it was so incredible. 
I'm a huge, huge Western fan. It's just you don't get to see a lot of that from me here. So I don't want to actually. <clears throat> I'm gonna move out of screen, out of like screen for a minute because I got to grab something else that I picked up. It's really cool, and uh, I'll talk to you guys about that. We actually watched the first uh, disc of it, and uh, a couple others as well that I picked up when I was in uh, in Cornerbrook. So I'll be right back. One of these was an Amazon deal today. But first, let's go through the stuff I picked up in Cornerbrook. So, first up, I grabbed this. Actually, my dad gave me this one. This is, is, a, uh, is a bit of a, is a cheapy one, but I really like the cheapy ones, especially coming near Halloween time. I look to, uh, to find this type of stuff. So, it's the Shadows collection. So, the Shadows is a film on here. It's got uh, Backwoods, of course, with Haley Duff on here as well, Feeding Grounds. Uh, Netherworld, which is a full moon film, Blood Predator, The Black Raven, Ghost Walks, and the one I really, really wanted this for is a film called Gothic by Ken Russell. I'm a huge Ken Russell fan. I wish Gothic would get a really good release, but until it does, uh, I'll continue to buy movies like this to actually just to see it. And uh, I'll watch the other ones there probably uh, sometime closer to the Halloween month just to prep myself. I watch. I usually watch like a bunch of cheapies. I'll uh, probably be the month or so, month to month and a half before I'll like turn them on every once in a while. To kind of prep myself and read myself for like a whole 31 days marathon of uh, Halloween horror. So, also I grabbed this uh, Dragon Dynasty set. Uh, I'd been looking for this one for a bit. Again, it was very inexpensive. In the Infernal Affairs trilogy. Of course, this is what, you know, The Departed was based on. There's three films in it. Of course, it's a trilogy. <clears throat> so, the first one actually doesn't have the Dragon Dynasty a logo on it that would actually uh, come into the uh, come in the second two, and I'll show you one of them here right now. So, looking forward to watching these again. Uh, of course, I have seen the Infernal Ferris Children before. Next up was one that my dad gave me. He had a couple copies of this one. Uh, this is one from England. It's from uh, the Final Cut, and it is a it is a Hammer film, and it is a Hammer film that I really really love. Uh, it's different from the other Hammer vampire films. It's got its own kind of feel to it, a different kind of feel to it, and, and I like that. And that is Kiss of the Vampire. So if you have never seen Kiss of the Vampire, I really do recommend it. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, very different Hammer film. I love the opening to it. Uh, classic Hammer. Get some blood in there. Have a really dramatic opening. So there's a <clears throat> like a, a cemetery scene. Really cool. Uh, this has actually... Uh, commentary with Edward D'Souza and Jennifer Daniels and it's moderated by Peter Irving so Edward D'Souza and Jennifer Daniels are actually two actors from the film. Um, the U.S. trailer on here, Stills Gallery and of course subtitles which is always good to have. Uh, something that I used to take for granted but I'm sure uh, people that are hard of hearing or uh, or even myself as I get older that subtitles are going to be one thing that's going to be a huge uh, you know, it's going to be big for me. I'm going to want to sometimes if the uh, TV's not working that great, or if my hearing ever goes at all, then you know, uh, then that's you know, I'm glad that subtitles are there. And I really, um, I get disappointed sometimes when I watch see something and subtitles are no longer included in this day and age. I think you know, for people that are, do have that issue, they should always be there. Just my thought. <laughs> so the last thing I picked up I was a really cool find. It was the Murder, She Wrote 4 movie collection. If you know what this is, this is the, uh, we know what Murder, She Wrote is. It's a mystery series where Jessica Fletcher, J.B. Fletcher, is a, uh, is a mystery author. She goes around, and wherever she goes, murders happen, and she solves them. Uh, I love this show. There was a lot of really big guest stars in the, in the series. Now, these are the four films that were done after the series ended. Uh, they did four, uh, four TV movies afterwards, kind of like to, uh, for, uh, for fans and to... Uh, she thought about doing them later on, but she felt that by the time they got around to actually getting it uh, together, she felt she was uh, she'd get she was older and she didn't want Jessica Fletcher to be not as active as she was. That she wanted the viewers to see Jessica Fletcher in the way that she was during the TV series. So she decided not to do it. They did think about making a series with Octavia Spencer in Murder She Wrote, but they were changing it to, so that Octavia Spencer was going to be a nurse and. Uh, Actually, Angela Lansbury plays Jessica Fletcher. Was not cool with it at all. She didn't like the the premise that they had. Uh, she didn't mind Octavia Spencer as the actress playing her. She just didn't like the uh, the nurse idea and the whole premise behind it. <clears throat> she said, "You know, just leave it as it is." They ended up doing that. I'm glad they did. Merch wrote lives in its own time. It was a fantastically done show. 
So I was really glad to get the four movie collection. This isn't on. They're like you can you can get the complete Merge Throat set. Like all there's twelve seasons of it, uh, but this is like not included in the twelve season set. This uh, for some reason they left this out, which is a shame. But uh, you know you just gotta once you got the series you can actually buy it. So this week, ironically, on a uh, Amazon as their deal of the day uh, for an amazing price. The had Murder she wrote. Uh, it seemed like a sign. I'd just picked up the four movies that weren't included in the set. I'd only had, well, I think, one or two seasons of this uh, myself, and they had the complete series there for a steal of a deal. It was just like a, a one-day uh, type of thing. It was one of those, you know, deal of the day things. All 12 seasons, like 264 episodes. Uh, Merge Short ran a long time, and if you ever want to be impressed by, like, here's just, there's not a lot of feature stuff on these, so here I'll show you. So, if you ever want to be impressed by a guest star list, go to Wikipedia and go to Murder, She Wrote Guest Stars. They're done in alphabetical order. It, it will amaze you how many big stars and stuff are in these, are in these episodes, just going down through. And they, they did multiple episodes. I watched some today. I got to see guys like Howard Duff, Martin Landau. Oh, Arthur Hill was in one. Uh, Ned Beatty. Uh, just some incredible. Anne Francis. Uh, some incredible, incredible actors. Uh, there was like some actors that came like a few times, like uh, the guy that played her nephew Grady. I think Jeannie Francis played her niece as well, and her boyfriend was played by Je played by Jeff Conway in most of the episodes. In the last episode that he's in, like they just came on like three or four times. Uh, Jeff Conway was available, so they had to get another actor to uh, step into that role. But uh, again, twelve seasons also have the he did a. In the late life of uh, Magnum P.I., they did like a kind of a, a crossover episode because at the time, Merge Short was doing gangbusters. Uh, Merge Short was always doing fairly well in the ratings, uh, but Magnum P.I. was near the end of it and it wasn't doing that well in the ratings. So kind of to boost Magnum P.I., they did like a, a, a crossover one between uh, Murder Short and uh, Magnum P.I. That is on here as well. And there's like, I uh, see, Great 80s Flashback. Remember that was coming on to those, when those sets that came out. Uh, Origin of Series. Uh, Recipe for a Hit, the main uh, crossover episode, America's Top Sleuths, and uh, the Perils of Success. So uh, I think Angela Angela was really surprised when Merge Short became a big hit, and she realized she wasn't going to be able to do her own grocery shopping. So that was actually a big deal for her. She's like, I can't do my own grocery shopping now. How's that going to work? Uh, so I also grabbed some other stuff as well. So I'll, I'll just really quickly show you. Probably see the film canisters there. That's because I got some 8 millimeters. Uh, now... These are the small ones here, so I'll just show you these right really fast. I got a uh, Andy Panda here, Abbott and Costello. I got Woody Woodpecker. And remember when I said Hoplon Cassidy before? It's the only one I got, and it's an 8mm. And there's the Hoplon Cassidy. Actually, really, really cool to have that one. Out of all of them there, I think I was probably most excited to have Hoppy. So uh, I'll just put this over here so there's actually these would put an actual uh, film canister so there's railroad stowaways is right here and there's a Chaplin one uh, caught in a cabara and this one here just to show you guys there of course bigger so these I'm guess these are probably shorter I got a few different ones here, so I got some Abba Costello right here. Uh, like there's four of those there, five of those. So some Walt Disney there, uh, some Three Stooges, some W.C. Fields. <clears throat> so a lot of really cool stuff. I also picked up. I won't get them now because uh, I don't want to move away from this here and like have to do this, restart this video. <laughs> uh, but I also picked up uh, Bugs Bunny's uh, Crazy Castle on the NES. I uh, grabbed the Mission Impossible uh, video game for the NES system as well, based on the 1988-1989 the uh, series, uh, you know, with uh, Peter Graves and uh, Theo Panglis, of course, in the, in the Martin Landau type of role. And I picked up a favorite of mine, and that's uh, Blaster Master. I love that game. I played a lot of it. Actually, I got through like about nine or ten levels of, uh, of Crazy Castles before I gave up on that one as well. Uh, the... the the Mission Impossible one is fun, but it is pretty hard. 
Um, but I really like the, the Blaster Master. Uh, the Blaster Master game. It is incredible. And it is so fun. And there's if you've ever seen the Switch version, it's pretty much, that's pretty much it. It's a remake of like kind of that one. <clears throat> and, uh, well, Switch is a remake of this one. And it, it just plays so well. It's, so apparently that one stopped. So I just want to say, uh, it's fantastic to be back on here to, uh, be talking to you guys again. I got some good stuff coming up. And, uh, I got some other videos. Hopefully I'm going to get them uh, put on here. Have a great evening, guys. For me right now, you know what time it is, what time it always is. Uh, I got to, well, actually, I got to do some crunches and stuff like that uh, and uh, have my salad. Um, healthier living. I've stopped eating potato chips and uh, completely. That was a hard thing when I first got out here. Though, when I went on my vacation, I like I kind of had a bag when I was in, uh, in Port of Bass. And... I just couldn't get into it anymore. Like, man, it's not going to, it's, I thought, okay, this could be my cheat day food. Because uh, uh, there's, oh God, I don't know, Nicole and Kyle, anyway, they are amazing people and they do, they're really good with the fitness stuff. And they've actually inspired me when it comes to this stuff. Uh, they have like, uh, they do like their fitness and stuff and then they have their cheat day. Um, but, uh, I can, chips can't be my cheap day any, cheat day anymore because I just uh, I just can't get it. I felt really crappy uh, putting them in my body afterwards. I uh, I really did. Yeah, so it's weird. Like I love chips. I used to have days when chips would be like the only thing that I ate and it showed because when I got here I was a little, I was uh, I lost twenty pounds since, since I got here. Basically, uh, not by by you know just not eating chips and like just staying and I'm fair, trying to stay fairly healthy. So there you go. That's my. Some, and but still, I gotta have my tea. It's the one thing I can't give up. Um, got my tea every night, and uh, just before I go to sleep, I grab a hot, I put a, get a, get a, I turn on my Keurig, and I grab a hot chocolate. But it's a while before I'm gonna sleep right now. It's a few more miles before I sleep. Thanks for watching. I am Aaron. I am the movie prof, and it is seriously because my voice is going. Time for tea. Have a great evening.